everyone. Welcome to the next AutoCAD workshop. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between model space and paper space and how one sets up paper or a sheet in AutoCAD. Um, so the space that we've currently been working in is what we call model space. Model space is an infinite 3D space where we draw it one to one. So when we scroll within this space, this will just keep going and going and going forever. We can draw something as big as anything. And by one-to-one, -one, what we mean is that when we draw a door, this is a door size to door. This line has a length of 820, which is the size of a real door, the width of a real door at one-to-one. -one. So this is all life size, um, by which I mean one-to-one -one scale life size and it's infinite space in that it will continue to go and go and we can draw something any size and again this is called model space and you can tell it's model space because we've got a little bar down the bottom here that says model now because this is one-to-one -one scale if we tried to print something from here it would come out at one-to-one -one, which means that if we tried to print this door area, for example, it would come out door sized, which isn't really appropriate. So instead of printing from model space, which is one to one, we go into something called paper space, which is based on sheet sizes uh, or paper sizes. The phrase sheet typically means paper in architecture. It, it's just the um, terminology which we'll be using from here on out to refer to a sheet of paper. It's called a sheet. So to get into paper space from model space, we do that by using these sheet and model uh, tabs down in the bottom left hand corner. Um, if you can't see these, we just need to make sure that they're turned on in your options. So if you go up to the big A in the left hand corner, click options and go to the second tab called display. Here in layout elements, the top one is called display layout and model tab. So you just need to make sure that that is ticked and that should make these guys appear. Once we're seeing those tabs, if we click on the first one called Layout 1, what this does is bring up our sheet. So you can tell that this looks like a piece of paper and it's got a little representation of what we've drawn on there before. Um, if we hover over um, this, this is called a viewport. We can click on it um, and you can tell it's called a viewport because it's up here. This is like a little window into our model space. Um, and we're going to talk a lot more about viewports in a bit, but first what I want you to do is just select and delete that viewport. If you find that you can't uh, select and delete your viewport, um, just gonna, I'm going to undo my deletion. What you might find is that um, your um, viewport might be activated when you come into this view for the first time. So what this means is that uh, you've got model space activated when you're in paper space. So um, when you scroll, for instance, you'll scroll within the model space window as opposed to scrolling from without. So if your viewport is activated, all you have to do is move your cursor outside the area of the viewport and double click. That will deactivate that viewport. The other way you can know if you're in model space or paper space is that you'll have model showing down here, even though you can see paper. If you click on model, you will also switch back to paper. And then you should be able to select and delete the viewport. Now, before we start putting any of our drawings onto the sheet, we need to define the sheet size and the sheet settings. So at the moment, we don't, uh, we don't know what size the sheet is. We don't know what these margins are doing. We don't know how it's set up to print. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna define all, the, all of those settings. First up, um, First up, I'm just going to reduce the size of my layer properties manager because I don't need it that big. I want to try and maximize the view of my page. And then we're going to come down into the tabs down the bottom left and I'm going to right click on my layout one, which is my activated tab. You're given this menu. Within here, you've got new layout for when we want to create a new, a new one and a lot of other different uh, options. But what I want you to come down to is a page setup manager. It's going to give us this dialog. Uh, when we've got more than one layout, that's going to give us some other options here. But for now, we're just going to click Modify. And this is going to bring up um, our first page of settings that we're going to uh, go through today. So the first thing we're going to change is the printer plotter. 
Um, so there's a lot of different options depending on what computer you're on, but all AutoCADs should have this option down here, DWG to PDF. I mean, it's the most standard one. So we're going to select DWG to PDF there. We're going to come down to paper size. Um, now we are working with an A3 sheet as we have been when we're doing all of our hand drawings. We want it to be full bleed as well because that means that there aren't um, any large margins on the edge. So when it come up to ISO full bleed A3, 420 by 297, showing us all this. Uh, we are plotting the layout. I want to make sure that this is scale one to one. I want to make sure we're plotting line weights and plot styles, all of this, and that we're in landscape mode. And then uh, we'll make sure that that's on presentation as well, so it's a little bit nicer to look at. Now, the last thing that we've got in our page setup manager is the plot style table up in the right hand corner. So, this little drop down will give you several different options. This is going to link to a CTB file that um, changes all our colours that we've got, that we're applying on our layers, into line weights. If we don't apply anything here, what will happen is when we plot, we will just get these colours as opposed to black and white with line weights. So it's very important that we make sure we're applying a file here and that it's the right file. So uh, we're going to download a CTB file that we've set up for you from my uni um, and we're going to apply that CTB file here. So first of all, we're going to hit OK and engage all of those settings and then close here. And then on my uni, you should be able to download a CTB file that's called Construction 2020. Um, download this and you need to save it on your computer and you need to remember where exactly you saved it. I would recommend you have a Construction 1 folder going and just save it in there along with all your DWG files. And then once you uh, have done that, we're going to come back to AutoCAD and we're going to come up to the big A and go Options. Let me bring up this dialog. We're going to jump across to the Files tab. We're going to come down to Printer Support File Path and expand that menu. And then we come down to Plot Style Table Search Path and expand that menu as well. Then we're going to hit Add and Browse. This is where you then need to navigate to where you have saved your file. Um, you don't have to navigate all the way down to the exact file, but um, say you saved it somewhere in your documents, you can just say to look in your documents file. Depending on how big your documents file is, I might recommend you go down a couple more and actually reach the constru your, your construction one folder. That's gonna be the most efficient way for you to do this. Hit okay and then hit okay. This might take a little while to think at this point just to load all of those files. Then we're gonna come back to layout, right click, page setup manager, modify, and then in the drop down. You should be able to now see your uh, Construction 2020 CTB file. So we select that, that'll stay there, and now we have set up our page. Uh, you'll notice that this would have changed appearance a little bit before, so now we don't have those margins on the edge, and we know that this is an A3 page. Now that we know our page is A3, we're going to draw, draw a title block, um, which is going to look exactly like the one that you've been drawing by hand. So we're going to use the line tool to do this. So we're going to engage line tool. Uh, we're going to ask us to specify the first point. I'm going to specify zero, zero, and that is so that we start from exactly that corner. Now, because we know the size of an A3 page, we know it's 420 in this direction, and then it's 297 up, 420 back over, 297 back down, and then enter to end. We've now defined our page um, and I'm going to use the offset tool. I'm going to offset by 10 mil uh, to get that border that we see on our title block. And we use a fillet tool to fillet those together. And then I'm going to erase these ones on the edge. I'm going to copy this one over by 75 mil. Again, you can decide how big you actually want your title block to be. That's totally fine. Now, at this point, I realized I haven't assessed my layer. Um, so I started this layer on detail one, which means that all of these objects are on detail one. These should all be on text. So this is a good lesson. You need to remember to be checking your current layer when you're drawing anything. So I'm now going to make sure I'm changed my current layer to text one by double clicking. 
You can see the little green arrow there now. I now know when I draw something new, it's going to be on the text layer. I'm going to copy this one up by 20 mil and I'm going to trim that one off. And then I'm going to copy that up again, 20 mil. And I'm going to draw a line from the center and I know that's the center because I'm getting them a little midpoint snap. And then I'll continue to copy this up, probably 40 mil. And then another 20 again, and then the top one, let's do 15. Oh, that was a typo, so I'm going to undo that. And I'll try again with 15. There we go. Now we've drawn our line work for our title block, but we have two things missing. Uh, all of the text that goes in the title block, and we're going to cover off text in a future module, so we're going to leave that for now. The other thing that we're missing is our actual drawing. So we insert our drawing by using a viewport. Now we had a viewport on the screen when we um, first came to this sheet and we deleted it for our setup. Um, a viewport is a, a window into model space. You can think of it like that. Um, what that does is it allows us to add um, a version of our drawing in model space to our paper space and it allows us to scale it. So we know that our plan that we drew by hand is 1 to 100. So we need to be able to insert our 1 to 1 life-size drawing of that, which we did in model space. We need to add that to this sheet at 1 to 100. So to create a viewport, we are going to come up to our ribbon and we're going to come across to the layout tab. Within the layout tab, we have a section called layout viewports and within here, we've got something called rectangular. This tool is going to create a rectangular viewport. Before I use that tool, I'm first going to change my layer. So if we look back to all of our layer names, we've got a special one down the bottom called Z no plot viewport. So I'm going to double click on that, make sure it's the current layer. Now, if you remember um, the settings for this where we've got the little, no, the little no sign over the plot button means that anything on this layer won't print. So what this means is that when we go and we create a viewport, it says specify a corner of viewport, we're going to click once and then we're going to click again. This edge of the viewport is purple because it's on our Xeno plot layer. This means that that border isn't going to print. So uh, we won't have an ugly square in the middle of our, of our sheet when we go to plot. The other thing that we're currently seeing through that viewport, besides all of our drawings, is a background grid. So I'm going to turn off that background grid by activating that viewport. So I just double clicked on it then. To deactivate, I'm going to double click outside of it. So again, to activate a viewport, we double click. Now that I have activated that viewport, when I scroll, I will uh, scroll within the viewport, within model space. I know I'm in model space because this says model down here. And it's giving me that status bar that we usually see in model space. Um, this first button here is called grid mode. If I click that, that grid's going to disappear. And this is a much cleaner view for my sheet. Um, if I double click outside, we then deactivate that, that viewport. When I scroll again, that's then scrolling the sheet. So you've got two different spaces here. You can tell that your viewport is activated when you've got the XY and your border is much thicker. The last and most important thing we need to do to this viewport before we fully set the sheet up is to scale it. So at the moment, um, first of all, we're seeing both the plan and the section. Our first sheet should only be showing the plan alone and not the section. And also it needs to be scaled at 1 to 100. So when we come back to this, when we activate the viewport, you'll see down the bottom in that status bar uh, this uh, large decimal point. If we click on that, we should be given a set of scales. If we then go to 1 to 100, because we know that that is the scale that we want to display our plan at, it will then automatically zoom, um, and this is sitting at 1 to 100. Um, some of the other things that we've got down here is a lock. So if we lock that, when I scroll, I then can't accidentally change that viewport, even though it's the one that is activated. And you can tell it's activated because the line is thick. Um, it's obviously not framed correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deactivate the viewport and then select the outside. And these little control points on the outside, you can drag them. So um, as you do that, it 
will tend to try and snap to things. So you can, at any point, turn your O snaps off. So remember that's down in your status bar. It's the little square with the, with the dot and another square on it. So when you click on that, I'm going to kind of come in and be able to reframe this viewport. So it's just showing my plan. And the viewport's an object like any other object. So I can use the move tool and I can reposition it on my page uh, roughly in the center where I want it to sit. The other way that you can reframe your viewport is by um, activating the viewport. And if you do not have this locked, you can of course pan and zoom within here. Um, as long as you don't scroll your wheel, your one to 100 scale will remain. So it's just a matter of being very careful with the way that you position it and making sure you don't accidentally scroll. So if I accidentally scroll a little bit, I now know that I'm not to scale anymore because my one to 100 is gone. I'm back to showing a decimal point. I just click on that again and rescale it. And I can pan very carefully, check that I'm still at one to 100, lock it again for safety. The last thing that's not quite appearing right with this is the line types. So we've got a dashed line on that roof um, that's not appearing properly. Now, we had this problem when we were in model space earlier. So if we just switch back to model space, you see that this dash is showing correctly. And the way that we got that to do that was by changing the line type scale before. So we changed the line type scale from one to 100. If we come back into paper space, and we're gonna try the line type scale again. So this is the global line type scale by typing empty scale. This is still at 100 because that's what we changed it to before. If we change this back to one, because we're currently back in paper space, our dashes then appear. So the line type scale will affect paper space and model space differently. So we're now back to not seeing the dash in model space. What you see in paper space is the way that it will print. So it's more important that your dashes look correct in paper space and on your sheet than it does uh, in model space. And that's the last thing we're gonna go through in this module. So uh, as I said before, the last thing we need for this uh, sheet is all of the text and we're going to go through that in the next module.